Marriage, the misunderstood phenomenon. An excerpt from Marriage, Mysteries and Dimensions Beyond. Marriage indeed is a misunderstood phenomenon. There is lack of awareness and understanding of the phenomenon. Love has not yet evolved out of the quagmire of sex. The existential bioenergy has not yet transcended with no harmony within. Emotions play a devil's role. One is then denied harmony's peaceful existence. In the absence, marriage exists as an institution of exploitation and business-like deals. Marriage in its present understanding is not togetherness. The marriage has utterly failed to deliver what it meant to in the first place. All marriages begin in the name of religion with great expectations. This is hypocrisy. No religious sanction, instead understanding is needed for marriage. Without understanding the essence of human nature, the psychology of sex, the existential bioenergy, the religions have imposed this as an institution of morality and divinity on man. I repeat this, without understanding the essence of human nature, the psychology of sex, the existential bioenergy, the religions have imposed this as an institution of morality and divinity of on man and it has failed miserably. Probably the number of divorces will outnumber the number of marriages on any given day. I have heard it was a class of religious studies in a school. The teacher asked the students what is the cause of divorce? Five-year-old child stood up and said, Of course, marriage is the cause of divorce. Of course, marriage is the cause of divorce. Probably the number of divorces would outnumber the number of marriages on any given day. That is why no happiness comes out of it as a flowering. It cannot. Out of the roots of exploitation, how ecstasy can emerge. Certainly no bliss thus will emerge. I have not heard of any perfect marriage. Also I have not heard of any marriage that has attained to ultimate flowering of love and the being. If there happens a flowering in any marriage, that will be rare. And on that basis no generalization can be made. Ironically, it is said, perfect marriages are made in heaven. Nobody comes back from there, so maybe it is true. But what kind of marriage will those perfect marriages be? There will be no tension. There will be no individuality in the man or in the woman. They will never collide and they will never fight. They will be too sweet to each other and too much sweetness, remember, brings diabetes. Marriage as an institution that teaches man regularity, frugality, temperance, forbearance and many other splendid virtues he would not need had he stayed single. It is not that traditional marriages alone have failed. Instead, the self-chosen marriages too have failed. Love marriage came into existence as a revolt against the traditionally arranged ones, but is not going to survive. And the degeneration has already begun. In such marriage, love comes first, and then one day suddenly love vanishes. Apparently, 
no one knows the art of freeing love out of the quagmire of sex. Talking about sex or bringing a deep mystical understanding is considered a taboo and even those who have attempted are the ones totally engrossed in the slush and the quicksand of sex. It was neither in your hands to bring it nor is it in your hands to keep it. All marriages too failed because the insistence was that you should love your wife, you should love your husband. It was a should and you could not even conceive how you could love at the most you can pretend or act. Certainly love is not a pretension or act. You cannot do anything. You are absolutely powerless as far as love is concerned. Old marriage failed. The new marriage is failing because the new marriage is simply a reaction to the traditional marriage. New marriage did not emerge out of understanding, instead only as a reaction and revolt. This is what we call love marriage or more appropriately the self-chosen ones. There is no one to blame for your choice. Again in your understanding and upbringing you blame the other for the failure and the cross. Marriage is a subtle politics of domination. Your fatherhood, motherhood, all are subtle politics. With marriage love disappears completely. Marriage has made love disappear from the life and earth as well. The other considerations for marriage is arranged, money, finance, family, prestige and astrology. These are all absurd. They have nothing to do with the heart of the two persons who are going to be married. All traditional marriages are astrologically verified to be successful. That too has failed. So marriage is almost always a failure. Only in rare accident it is not so, but they are accidents and exceptions too. They cannot be counted. Marriage is always on the rocks because it is for wrong reasons. Only love can become the foundation of a real marriage. There is no other way. Because there is no other way to find that your wavelength is exactly the same as the other and that you vibrate in the same way as the other. There is no other way to find it out. One should marry only when one is wise enough. Marry only when you, you have understood the psychology of sex and also the dimension beyond it. One should marry only when one is wise enough. Marry only when you have understood the psychology of sex and the dimension beyond. It is not just anatomy of it. And this is not available. Your so-called custodians of the religion are themselves engrossed in its quicksand and have no clue to transcend and they have no clue to transcend beyond the existential bioenergy. Marriage is not for young people. For young people it is to fool around. Marriage is for those who have experienced life in many ways, who have seen all the colors, the whole spectrum of it and, now, and are now ready to settle. I am not against marriage, but certainly I am for love. If love becomes your marriage, it will be good and transcendence will happen through marriage then. However, do not expect that marriage can bring love. That is not possible. Instead, vice versa is true. Certainly love can become a marriage. You have to work very consciously to transform your love into marriage. This can happen 
only when the dimension of meditation is there. Ordinarily people destroy their love, they do everything to destroy it and then they suffer. And they go on saying what went wrong. They destroy it in the first place and then they do everything to destroy it. And they go on saying what went wrong. Just give me a minute here. Ordinarily people destroy their love. They do everything to destroy it and then they suffer. And they go on saying what went wrong. They destroy it in the first place and they do everything to destroy it further. There is tremendous desire and longing for love. But love needs great awareness. Only then can it reach its highest peak, the climax. And that highest climax of love is marriage. It has nothing to do with love. It is a merging of two hearts into totality. It is the functioning of two persons in synchronicity. Know this happening as marriage. But people try love and because they are unconscious, although their longing is good, but their love is full of jealousy, possessiveness, anger and all kinds of viciousness. Soon they destroy love. Hence for centuries they have depended on marriage. Better to start by marriage so that the law can protect you from destroying it. The society, the government, the court, the policeman, the priest, they will all force you to live within the preamble of institution of marriage and you will be living just a slave. If marriage is an institution, you are certainly going to be a slave in it. Only slave wants to live in institutions. Marriage is a totally different phenomenon. It is the climax of love. Then it is good. I am not against marriage. Certainly I am for the real marriage. I am against the false, the pseudo, that exist in the name of marriage and love. But it is an arrangement. It gives you a certain security, safety and occupation. It keeps you engaged. Otherwise it will give you no enrichment or any kind of nourishment. I have never said love is destroyed by marriage. How can marriage destroy love? Indeed, love is destroyed in marriage. Certainly it is destroyed by you and your understanding and conditioning, not by marriage. You do not have understanding of love. Love is destroyed by the partners. How can marriage destroy love? It is you who destroys it. It is you who destroy it because you do not know what love is. You simply pretend to know. You simply hope that you know. You dream that you know. But you know nothing of love. Love has to be learned. It has to grow in you first. Love is the greatest art there is. In the East, India missed with arranged marriages and the West is missing with free love. India missed love because parents were too calculative and cunning. They would not allow falling in love. That is too dangerous and nobody knows where it will lead. They were too clever and through cleverness India missed all possibilities of flowering of love. In the West 
they are too rebellious too young but not clever certainly they were too young and too childish to understand the sanctity of love they have made sex a free thing love is made available everywhere as certainly there is no need to go deep to discover love enjoy sex and be happy with it through sex the west is missing and through marriage the east is missing but if you are alert you need not be eastern or western love is neither eastern nor western go on discovering love within you and if you love sooner or later the person will happen to you because a loving heart sooner or later comes to a loving heart it always happens you will find the right person but if you are jealous as everyone is you will not find if you are simply for sex you will not find if you live only for security you will not find love be a little aware before you are trapped marriage is a trap soon you will be trapped by the woman and the woman will be trapped by you it is a mutual trap and then legally you are allowed to torture each other forever of course financial security and alimony is guaranteed by the court of law in case things flop then there is no problem in going into it if you are a woman for this simple reason women go for older yet rich companions so that financial future is secured sex can be fulfilled later as well first be financially secure love and love deeply as possible and if you and if love itself becomes the marriage that is another thing altogether different if love itself becomes such intimacy that it is unbreakable that is another thing there is no legal sanction legal sanctions are needed only because you are afraid you know that your love is not enough you need the legal support for it you know perfectly well that you can escape or the woman can escape hence you need the policeman to keep you together but it is ugly to need a policeman to keep you together that is what marriage is the future out of 100 marriages 99 marriages are just a license prostitution maybe it is mono they are not marriages a marriage is only a real marriage when it grows out of love legal illegal does not matter the real thing that matters is love if love exists between two persons it is blessed if love does not exist between two persons then all your laws put together cannot bridge them then they exist separate then they exist apart then they exist in conflict always in war and they create all kinds of trouble for each other they are nasty to each other nagging to each other yet possessive of each other violent oppressive dominating and dictatorial in a better world with a better humanity things will be different in a better world the children will be born out of love in a better world the children born out of love will not be called bastard the child 
only born out of license law will be called bastard love affairs have been failing miserably and parents feel very happy people inquire look in the west love affairs have been failing then why are you against marriage they ask me love affairs are failing because first the marriage was arranged by the astrologer then it was arranged by the parents and now it is being arranged by biology or the instincts you suddenly feel that you are that you like a woman but you never know how long this is going to last and you are not even aware why you like her you are not even aware to what it is in you that likes her maybe it is just her hair style now are you going to get married to a hair style love has captured you in the moment of your instincts or unconsciousness how can it last you can get married but tomorrow morning when you see her hair disheveled you will be at loss is this the same woman i fell in love with how long can you be interested in hair style soon you will get fed up the same hair style again and again the whole day 24 hours a day same face people are falling in love because a certain man has a certain type of nose people are falling in love with fragments love implies growing in totality nobody is bothered about the totality of the person suddenly you see a person man or woman you like a fragment of his maybe his dressing his style maybe his makeup maybe his face and you know nothing about the totality of that person maybe you find that you like pizzas and he likes pizzas so that is it or you like a particular type of movie and you see him or her in the movie theater seeing always that kind of movies you have fallen in love with the fragment nobody is bothered about the totality of the person and it is a vast thing the nose does not count for much the hair style does not count for much after two days you will not look at her nose or hair style at all or the color or the shape or the proportion of the body all these things are very minor and short lived with the passage of time these change the real thing is the total functioning of the person the real thing is the total functioning of the person totality of the being and that can be experienced only if you have known yourself first then you have created a pool within you your understanding of yourself has created a pool within you. that pool will attract its complementary no one falls in love with a 5 year old child to get married the real thing is the total functioning of the person that can be experienced only if you have known your innerness your silence your being and in knowing that you have attained to a harmony you begin to operate in a totally different we 
this creates a pole within you an energy field within you and this pole or the energy field will attract its counterpart attract its complementary and then love can blossom the transcendence can be attained through such meeting of the two beings and then meeting ends in union such a union between two people who have understood themselves who have explored deep harmony within them can enter into a communion and that communion is marriage no religious no political no sanction of the law is needed for it it is born out of your spontaneity out of your harmony and inner oneness i am in favor of such a union between two people this alone can be called marriage